Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Behind me, 2008 Toyota Prius. We got a big project. We're gonna be rebuilding the engine. Now in order to pull the engine, the manual has you do it from underneath. So you need a hoist to lift the car off the engine. We do not have that equipment. So what we're gonna try to do is rebuild this engine in vehicle. This will be a 99% rebuild because we cannot get to the rear main seal, but everything else we should be able to take care of without removing the engine. So we're gonna break this up into mini series videos, try to keep them as short as possible, but as detailed as possible as well. So if you're doing this on your Prius, you have all the information you need. This video will focus on the timing chain, getting that cover off, getting the chain off, and setting the engine to top dead center. Let's get started. First thing we wanna do before we get too crazy with it is right here, there's an orange service plug. We wanna push that up, then over and out. So for draining our coolant, we have two radiators on this. We have the main radiator and then the inverter radiator. The main radiator is drained by that drain right there. But if you're unable to get to it, that's okay. When we pull the water pump off, our coolant will come out there if you can't get it here. So not a big deal. That lower hose, that's for our inverter. So we can pop that hose off and drain our inverter cooler. Let's see if this will twist. There we go. Then we got our catch pan underneath right there. Let's see how big of a mess we can make. Perfect. We'll just let that drain. All right, moving along, we got our cowl to take off. Our wiper arms are 14 millimeter. Give them a wiggle and they should pop up. There we go. Our top plastic can come off. Should just pop up. There we go. Take this little rubber. There we go. We just have to maneuver it. It was kind of stuck under the hood just a smidge here. So that side's off. Come over to this side. Now this vehicle does not have clips on the side, but if you have clips, there may be one on this end and one on that end. There we go. Perfect. Now we'll remove our wiper motor, unplug it, and then 10 millimeter bolts. Set this aside. And now our bottom tray. We have this harness we can disconnect from the back with just a pair of pliers. I like using a little small needle nose like this. You just pinch the back of it and it pops through. There we go. And then same with this one here. Just wanna pinch it, pop it up. We have our relay box, two 10 millimeters. I'm just gonna put these bolts right back in. Pull up and out. Nice, that gives us a lot of room to work with. Next we wanna get access to our valve cover. We're gonna pull off our air box. 10 mil here, might actually be an eight. Let me see, no, 10 mil. Now it's okay if you do this stuff out of order, it really doesn't matter. We're just trying to get access to pull our valve cover off. So this pipe is screwed in from the bottom, so you just leave it just like this. Put the radiator cap back on so nothing falls inside. We have two 10 millimeters back here. There we go. We got our mass airflow. We can just unplug. And there's a clip right here with a flathead screwdriver. Just pull up on that clip. There we go. Now mine just pulled up, but if yours does not pull up, there's a 10 millimeter clamp right here in the front, right underneath our mass airflow sensor. Just in case you need that. Mine just wiggled right up. We'll loosen that up before putting it back on. So just something to note. Move this just out of the way. We'll remove our brake reservoir. There's an electrical connector on this side. Pop that out. And it looks like two 10 millimeter bolts. There we go. Kind of locks in the front, so slide it backwards and up. We'll just get this out of the way. Probably use a bungee cord and put these back in. And we're gonna get all our electrical connectors out of the way. For our ignition coils, these like to break a lot. If you just push on the tab, they like to snap. So I like using just a little pick here, getting in front of them and popping them up from the front and then wiggle them off. If they do break, that's okay. They will slide back on and, and not come off. But if you want these safety tabs, then this is how I like doing it. Just pop this out of the way here. Okay, our fuel injectors, pop those off. Nice. Now we have our main harness here, 10 millimeter. And we have this little plastic plate we can slide out. All right, that's good for now. We're not gonna pull the cover off yet because I don't wanna get any dirt and stuff in the engine while we're still working around here. So we're just gonna leave the cover on. That gives us our access. Now we're gonna work over here so we got access to our timing cover. We're gonna get our reservoir out of the way. 10 millimeter back here. 
We have this connector attached to it here. Let's push that through. Okay, we can even unplug it if we want to, just to give us a little more freedom. I believe that's it. And it comes up. And maybe this has to come up first. This little piece it just has a little clip in the front. This clip was missing. And this, it just pops out pretty easy. Let's see if that's what we needed. We can get to the electrical connectors. Should just be two, one for the front pump, one for the rear pump. There we go. Perfect. So now we got our hoses. There we go, there we go. Hopefully I don't do this too often, but I wasn't recording. So we got the bottle out. The next thing I did was just took this off. Just our bracket that our brake reservoir was connected to. Two 10 millimeter bolts up top, one in the front, and then this little hose here was pushed in right here. You just take a pair of pliers, pop that out. And we don't have to pull this out. We just have to just set it aside like that. No big deal. Now we have access to our engine mount. So what we want to do is take a jack, put it under the engine, put just a little bit of pressure on it. We want to support the engine while we pull off our mount. They all look like 14 millimeter. I think that's it. Oh, there's one underneath. So there are two more from underneath. Let me show you real quick. So that's one there under the engine mount and there's one more behind it. So we'll get those from underneath, no big deal. Another thing I wanna show you while we're here, before we take our drive belt off, we're gonna go ahead and crack those three 10 millimeter bolts holding our water pump pulley on. We don't have to take them all the way out, we're just gonna crack them loose. It's kinda hard to see from this angle in the lighting, but in order to pull those bolts off, we have to hold the pump in place to prevent that pulley from spinning. So I'm gonna try this, don't know if it'll work, but I'm gonna see if I can tighten the belt by tightening the tensioner. It's a 14 mil, we'll break loose that pulley bolt. There we go. And then a 12 mil tensioner bolt right here on top. We'll see if we can really snug that down. Get it nice and tight. Okay, we'll take a 10 mil ratchet and see if we can just pop these loose. Okay, there's one. Yeah, that worked. You just have to kind of give it a little, little jerk. And it'll pop. See if we can get the other two. Nice, okay. That was two. One more. Okay, I think that's it. Sweet, it worked. So now we can actually take the belt off completely. All right, we'll just get that belt from underneath. Okay, let's hop down below. We got it jacked up, we'll pull our tire off. So now for this cover, we got a couple of clips up here. We'll pop that off and then see what else we have. So yours might look different getting this plastic off, but just follow it, try to figure out how it comes off. Uh, mine has zip ties and stuff that, that'll be clipped and a couple of screws because my bumper here is not complete. But just methodically follow it, figure out how it comes off. But that's our next step. We wanna get this whole plastic piece off and out of the way. So now from underneath, now we can see clearly those two bolts. We'll pop those off, still 14 millimeter. We can pull off our water pump pulley too while we're down here. This should just be finger tight now. And then once that's off, then we can get our big bracket off as well. Then we also have our crank pulley that will pull off too. Making good progress. Let me get those. One thing I'm gonna do is go up top and put on some top bolts. Since these are coming from underneath, I don't wanna be underneath here if something fails. So I'm gonna secure the top back up, then pull these off and then retake off the top one so I can be up above while this mount comes off. I'm gonna pull off the bracket holding our AC line on. And then this hose goes to, looks like our purge solenoid, 10 millimeter for that as well. Okay, let's see if this can come up. Okay, I must be missing something. Let me show you something real quick. So this stud here is actually a bolt. Let me show you. If you follow, come down here. Let me turn the light on. It's that bolt right there. So I'm gonna see if that bolt can back out. I think that's what's holding us up. It's also a 14 mil. Let me see. Yep, I think that was it. Cause it was just at an angle and this needs to come straight up. Yeah, there we go. Nice. And then we have one more bolt holding that other bracket on. There we go. Kind of hard to see, but I'm just taking the metal bracket off that has our tensioner pulley on. It's 14 millimeter. I broke loose with a ratchet. Now we'll see if we can get him with my electric ratchet. Now my ratchet's stuck. There we go. So if that happens to you, I took the battery out so it wouldn't keep turning on as I took it out but that was just for that bottom one. There we go. Also by jacking up the engine a little like I did, gave us better access to that middle one. Nice. 
Then just the top one. Uh, is there one more? There is one more, so there's four total. It's right underneath the tensioner pulley. Okay, perfect. Let's pull our crank pulley off, 19 millimeter. Should come out pretty easy. Oh, nice. Let me move you real quick and we'll pull off our crank position sensor. Hopefully you can see better. So on our connector, there's a tab right here. We wanna pull it all the way back. It's kinda of hard to do with your fingers, but there, and then it should slide right off. So right here is this little tab you wanna pull back. So that gets our connector off, 10 millimeter, holds it in. And it's really long. There we go, and out. So now from up above, we'll pull off our water pump. We want to have a catch pan underneath. There's a lot of coolant's gonna come dripping out. I just wanted to show you, I need a little more room for my catch pan. So I took the jack out. I put a jack stand underneath the engine. That's holding it up for now. So I was able to take the jack out to get my big catch pan under here. For the water pump, it's just a cute little pump right there. A couple of 10 millimeter bolts and we'll pull that out. All right, now we just have to pull the valve cover and then we can pull off the timing cover. 10 millimeter bolt holds our coils in. Hmm, like a rock. That's weird. Beautiful little moth. Now there should be two 10 millimeter bolts in the middle. And then our perimeter bolts, all 10 millimeter. And still have our two hoses on the side here. Little breather hoses. There we go. So they give you a little spot right here to pry up on. There we go. Let's pop that seal. Nice. Some of the gas gets still stuck to the head. There we go. One thing I forgot here is our VVT solenoid. We unplug it. Get a little assistance with this one. And then a 10 millimeter. Twist and pop it out. We also have this ground strap. There's a 10 millimeter right here on the frame. We'll just pop that off. There we go. Now for our timing cover, I'll throw where the bolts are up on the screen, but there's not really much for filming. We're just getting all those bolts off and then we'll pop it away from the engine and then wiggle it up. All right, I think I got all the bolts. I double checked. I think we're good. And remember, as you're pulling the bolts off, to get better access, you can always raise the engine or lower the engine as needed. Let me get a little pry bar and we'll start prying this away. Let's try up here first real quick. There we go. Try back here. Well, this will just be really sticky because of the RTV. Get a little in here. There we go. Okay. Okay, I think that's it. I think we're still a little glued down at the bottom. There we go. Okay, should pull up. Nice. I'm gonna pull this little herd solenoid hose off. Or it can come out the bottom. Ugh. All right, there we go, that's it. Now mine came out the bottom, but if you're pulling it out of the top, I would have had to pull this hose off. Now we wanna put this at cylinder one, top dead center. To make it easier to turn the engine over, I'm gonna pull the spark plugs out real quick. Now I'm just putting the crank pulley bolt back in. I think that's it. Let me show you real quick. So on the exhaust, there's one line facing straight up, and then on the intake, there's a line there facing straight up as well. So both lines facing straight up, and then down on the crank, we have our notch there. Really hard to see, but there's a little dimple. Can you see it right there? That little dimple is facing three o'clock. And that's it. Timing set, now we can pull the chain. Everything's a 10 millimeter. Getting the tensioner from down below. And that guide should be able to just Slide off, there we go. Then the other arm, one bolt from down below. One bolt from up above. There we go, and that's it. Out we go. All right, we got the timing chain off, making awesome progress. This is gonna wrap up this video in the series. The next video, we're gonna be pulling off the head. Not really much to do from this point to pulling off the head. According to the manual, the exhaust manifold stays on and the intake manifold stays on. So we're gonna be pulling off our inverter and just clearing the way around to make room for our head. 
Thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful. Comment down below any questions. I'll try to respond in a timely manner. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.